What has wealth meant to you, sir? A, an enormous convenience. Uh, uh, anybody that docks money uh, either has none or too much. Uh, it's uh, a mighty useful commodity, and I recommend it. That's a recommendation worth considering when it comes from this man, Malcolm S. Forbes. He's reputed to be a billionaire. And this is a source of his wealth, the very influential American finance magazine, Forbes. It frequently lists the wealth of the moneyed people of America, but Malcolm Forbes himself is a little loath to tell you just what he's worth. Uh, uh, the fact is, I don't know what I'm worth, except that I'm solvent. I don't know what Forbes magazine is worth. It's not for sale. Uh, I don't know what the uh, uh, 100,000 to 300,000 acres of land we have in America. I don't know specifically what in total it's worth. I don't know what our art collections are worth. I know what some of them are. Mr. Forbes forgot to mention there the island where we're doing this interview, the beautiful Fijian island of Lothala. He bought it outright in 1970 and has since set about creating his paradise in the sun. It's just uh, a, a bit of paradise that's been created uh, by the people who uh, live and enjoy it, uh, who are part of it. Whether by default or design, the natives have benefited from this man, who was universally referred to on the island as good man Mr. Forbes. He got rid of their native huts for them and gave them each a white cement block home with a red roof. Malcolm Forbes' Lothala home, which he occupies on a few days of the year when he's not at his chateau in France, his palace in Morocco, his Colorado ranch, or his 20-room mansion in New Jersey, sits atop the hill. It's suitably adorned with a swimming pool, which in turn is suitably adorned with two private bodyguards, and the third man is Mr. Forbes's private bagpipe player. But Mr. Forbes insists all of this is not hedonism. The hedonism has a connotation <laughs> that uh, uh, suggests all kinds of self-indulgence, and uh, I, I don't think it's quite that simple. Well, if that's not hedonism, then try a few of Mr. Forbes' other trappings for size. At Nandy Airport sits his private light aircraft, kept for island hopping. Then there's the country hopping version, the private 727, subtly adorned with the Forbes logo. And there's the seagoing version of such opulence, 150-foot launch, the Highlander, fully equipped with two speedboats, two motorbikes, and of course, the compulsory helicopter. As far as I'm concerned, they are uh, great pleasures and great usefulnesses. When you're in our business, which is knowing the business of every major business in America and every multinational, the ways you get to know people and evaluate them is being able to get close to them. Mr. Forbes didn't talk about another recent guest on board the Highlander, Liz Taylor, his lady until that man George Hamilton came along. And Mr. Forbes didn't get around to explaining the usefulness of some of the other trappings like a huge collection of Harley-Davidson motorbikes, which he regularly resorts to for rides across America, and his distinctive hot air balloons, which he used to become the first man to balloon across the United States. Do you um, think you've put yourself at great risk in, in some of your ventures? Oh, well, of course, but uh, being alive is a risk. It's bound to lead to death. It seems there's little Mr. Forbes does which doesn't involve dignitaries and the full gaze of the media, even when it comes to a party on his remote island. <laughs> This is a traditional Fijian welcome organised by Mr Forbes as a show of support for the interim government of Fiji, and it certainly wasn't lacking in dignitaries. There was President Ratu Sapenai Ganilau, Prime Minister Ratu Kamasisi Mara, and the man who caused that hiccup in political life in Fiji, Brigadier Sidavani Rambuka. But the whole thing seemed a little lost on Mr Forbes' granddaughter. And while the natives were performing for their seemingly benevolent master, he responded with a spectacle of his own, a spectacle which highlighted the huge difference between two cultures. It's just when you start wondering whether Malcolm Forbes has a genuine regard for his people of Lafala that he tells you his final wish on this earth is to be buried along with them in his Pacific paradise. Oh,